I mentioned in an earlier video that InDesign really didn't specialize in anything. Uh, that really isn't true. Uh, InDesign does specialize in handling type. It has very powerful type controls, and that's what we're going to start covering in this, in this video. Now, as you're looking at the screen here, you can see that uh, there is a block of text. It's within a three-column page. I'm zoomed way in on it. And you'll probably, you're probably also noticing that there is a box around the text. So if I click on that, you can see that more clearly. Now, something you really need to understand about InDesign. If you have content within a page, it must be contained within a box. So whether that's an image or a text or a graphic, anything that is in an InDesign page must be contained in a box. And so this, obviously, is a text box. Now, the power of this is that this box with this bounding, you know, looks like a bounding box, is I can click and hold on any one of those handles, and I can resize this box, and you'll see how it affects the content. It affects the type inside. And so it's very easy for me to adjust, in this case, the column width, but really just the text box at any time for my type. You'll also notice that I could see this in real time. So if I click and hold before I drag, then I can see the changes as they're occurring. If I just drag a handle and drag it real quickly, I don't see that. It will still affect what I'm trying to do, but if I want to see it working, then I need to click and hold and drag. And so there's two ways you can get this text box. You can create the box um, when you are creating text, or when you import text, it will automatically create a text box for you and conform to your, to your grid, to your columns. Um, so let's go ahead and move on to the next screen and uh, we're going we're gonna to build something and uh, I will show you how to create, import, and modify some type. Now I'm wondering if you noticed in the previous screen that that text was from Charlotte's Web, one of my all-time favorite children's stories. I still enjoy it. Um, we are going to build this page. So I'm going to give you these pieces and uh, you'll notice there is a link right below this video which you can download uh, the files you're going to need to build this. Now I've already put the images into position. We're just going to work with type in here and then we'll deal with images in a future video. But we're going to create the text for the headline here and then for the subhead, this is actually the, uh, the chapter uh, number and name. We're going to pretend that this is a magazine that is running a serial of the Charlotte's Web book, chapter by chapter, and then we're going to import the actual text. This cool little way the type runs around the image, that is called a runaround or a text wrap. Uh, that is actually something you do with the image, so that is already built into the file. You won't have to do anything, and I will show you how to do that as well in a future video. No way! But let's go ahead and uh, get cracking. So here is the file I'm giving you with, the, uh, with Charlotte and Wilbur both already in position. You'll notice that I've created columns uh, for this first page pretty much centered. And then if you scroll down, you'll see that there are an additional two pages. We're really not going to be working with those too much, but I wanted you to notice that this page is a little bit different than the first page. They've got different margins. And uh, that is quite easy to do. The other two pages were, were formatted by a master. And then this one, I just went in and I went up to layout and margins and columns, and I change the parameters for this page only. And remember, when you do that, just make sure that you have that page marked in the Pages window. Okay, so as I mentioned, you've got to have a box no matter what it is you're bringing in. So you'll notice these two images have uh, image boxes around them. Um, we want to first create the headline text. And so I'm going to get the Type tool. And again, very similar to Illustrator. In fact, you can make a text box in Illustrator. It's just most of the time you don't really need to. But in InDesign, you do need to. So I am going to drag a box right here, and I'm just going to pull it to be the width of the, the two columns. Okay, you'll notice when I finish, it gives me a blinking cursor. And in that first box, this is where we're going to type Charlotte. 
pardon my slow typing, actually Charlotte's possessive. And then I'm gonna drag across that type. And then I can either go to my type window over here, or I can go up to the control window at the top. Whatever you prefer, doesn't matter. And then what I wanna do is I wanna use Bauer Bodoni. So I'm just gonna type in B-A-U um, up here and that will take me right to it. So I'm gonna choose that. And then obviously that is much too small. So I am going to make it as big as I can with the drop down. And then I actually know, because I had to create the previous example, that this is 120 points. So I'm just gonna go ahead and type in 120 right there. And then it looks like my box isn't quite big enough, so let me pull it wider. And the problem is here, this spacing right here, I ended up modifying. So I'm gonna do two things. I'm gonna push this over into position. So let me zoom in a bit so you can see a little bit better. You notice this actually is not where I want it to be. I want this to be aligned with that line. And truth be told, I actually want it to go a little bit past that line. Watch the video on typography if you forget why that is. So I'm just gonna mark this box and use the arrow key to kind of scunch it over and just overlap it a little bit. And that way it'll optically kind of adhere to that line. Now, I'm actually gonna end up getting rid of this apostrophe. So I'm gonna do that. I'm just gonna get rid of the apostrophe and that will close up the spacing because remember Charlotte ends up being the apostrophe. But I still do wanna separate those two letters apart. So here's a cool trick for kerning, the same one I showed you in Illustrator. If you hold down the Option key on the Mac and the Alt key on the PC, and then hit your right or left arrow keys, it will move the letters further or closer to each other. So I'm just gonna move that over till it just kind of scunches just a bit over that line. And then I can get my black arrow tool, and then I can just drag this up till it gets where I want it to be. So that's about right. Now in my example, you remember that type was pink. And so I'm gonna click on this and then I am going to go to the swatches. Now because I gave you this file, you should have a Charlotte pink in your swatches. I created that and added that, again, to come in a future video. But for now, I just wanna make sure up, I go to the top and before I click on this, that I click on the little T. If I don't, this will happen. I'll basically just fill the box. And so I don't wanna do that. I'm gonna go Command Z to undo. I'm gonna click on the T and then I'm gonna click on the swatch I want and I have effectively changed the color of my type. So if you wanna more, know more about color, watch the video on color. And then I want to do the same thing for the word web. Now, I could start completely from scratch, but I think you know by now that I'm lazy. Very. Um, so I am going to make a copy of this. And so just like an illustrator, if I click and hold and then press down the option key and drag, you'll notice that you can drag a copy of your text. And now all I have to do is just type over this and then I don't have to redo anything. How beautiful is that? Whatever. Now, I'm noticing I've got a little bit of a kerning problem between the W and the E. I'm gonna click between there, hold the Option key and hit the left arrow, and just kind of tuck that in there so it's a little more comfortable and even. Okay, so, so far so good, right? right? Now, you may have noticed in the example I showed you, let me go back here, that you didn't see any lines. Well, that's because I have it in preview mode. And there's a really simple way to do this. Let me go back. If you just hit the W key, and that will toggle all of your guides on and off. So you can get a look at this. I just did fit in window, command zero. So you can look at this without all those distracting guides. Now I actually work in this view a lot because I find those guides very distracting, but then I'll turn them back on when I need to refer to them for placement of something. So I'm gonna hit my W key again, and that will toggle those back on. And then I'm just gonna move this up a little bit with my arrow key. And uh, somewhere in there, that looks pretty good for now. And now what I wanna do is I wanna make that chapter number and, uh, and name. So I'm gonna get my type tool again, 
and I'm just going to draw it down here. And again, I get the blinking cursor. So this says 13 good progress. Okay, so again, that is way too small and the wrong typeface. And so I marked it with the arrow tool this time, which means I can't change the type up here, but I can go to the character window and Museo 300 is what I wanna start with. And then the size of this is 38 point. Don't need to worry about the letting because it is a single line of text. And then the 13 is bolder. So I'm gonna get my type tool and just drag over that 13. And I'm gonna change the weight of this down to 700. There we go. And this will end up just staying black. So I'm gonna adjust my type box, just make it a little closer to the size of the type itself. And then I'm just gonna drag this into position. So I want this to kind of align to that same right margin, like that. And then just kind of visually move it around until it looks good, till it feels comfortable. Much of design is about it just feeling right. Oh, baby. Okay. So that's good. If you, if you did this, if you kept up with me, you're doing great. So now we wanna get that text box in here. And so remember I told you earlier that if you place your text, you don't have to create a text box. You can, if you wanna go ahead and make your text box be a specific size, you can make it, get the blinking cursor, and then you can go to place. Um, but I'm just gonna go straight to the place command. So under the file menu, pull down to place, and this will let me navigate to my text, which is right here. So you'll notice that this is a, uh, a Word document. Click open. And I have a little box checked in there saying to give me the ability to choose what I want to import. Um, so I usually remove styles and formatting from the text and tables. I'm gonna keep it this time, however, so we don't have to get in uh, creating new tabs and stuff like that. Um, so that will pretty much import the styles that were created in Word, and uh, we're pretty much good to go. So click OK, and now it gives me a loaded cursor. So if I just go in here and click, say right about there, you'll notice, boom. It plunks my text in. Um, you already got that text wrap because that's attached to the image. But how easy is that? Um, answer, very. And uh, so now I can look closely at this. So let me zoom in. And this obviously I don't need. So I can go in and just delete that. And then there is my text. And so what I'd like to do is go ahead and change this. And remember, there's a lot of text was, which isn't showing. So I don't know how well you can see it, but down here, there's that little box with a plus sign in it. So if I just change what's showing in the window, it's only gonna change what's showing in the window. Yeah. I wanna change all the text, whether it's showing or not. So I'm gonna click inside the box over here. You can get this from a menu, but I always just do keystrokes. Command A or Control A on a PC, and that will select all. And so that's pretty much universal. You should, you should know that one by now. And that will mark all of the text, whether you're seeing it or not. And so now I can go in and I can change this to Museo 300. And uh, I am also going to change the size on this. I'm gonna make this be 11 point, And then I'm gonna put it on 16 points of letting. So 11 on 16. So letting, remember, is line spacing, meaning there is gonna be 16 points measured from baseline to baseline. All right, easy. I am gonna get rid of this extra space. And you can see that's pretty nice, isn't it? Yes, dear. So I can click away to unmark everything. And you see how quickly we were able to kind of get that done. So I'm going to just move this down a little bit. I want the type to kind of sit on that baseline at the bottom. Good. And then you may remember that this type for far into the night was bold in all caps. So let me go ahead and do this. So I'm going to drag over that far into the night. 
and I can go ahead and make this Sancta Museo 900 is what I used. And I really want this to be all caps. So I can go up to the type menu and get this, or I can right click and I can pull down to change case. And right there, I can choose uppercase and boom, easy like the pie. Yum. Fit in window. Okay, so elephant in the room, where the hell is the rest of your type? Well, I need to release it. If you go down to that red box with the plus sign in it, guess what? I can click on that and then I can just come up and I can drag a new box or I can just click to release it. And you'll notice that, look, there's another box. This has a plus sign telling me there's even more text. And so I'm gonna click on this again. And I'm gonna go down to this column down here and I am going to click. And this will go on and on and on. Uh, so I'm just gonna stop there. This will actually fill up another three pages, I believe. And so uh, that's how it works. Now, what's really great is that this is truly linked together. So if I drag this box here smaller, watch the column on the right. You see how that automatically just flows over to the other column? And so this is all very real time, it reacts, it's intuitive, it's really a nice way to work with text. And so I'm going to reduce the size of this because I don't want just that single beginning of the next paragraph. And then something that I almost always want to do, it's not always possible, but whenever it is, uh, you should do this. So I want my lines to line up with each other in each column. So in other words, there isn't this jump up here. So if I just pulled in a guideline, and remember I showed you in the last video how to get that, pull it from the ruler, line it up to the baseline that you wanna match, and then I can mark this column here and pull it down till I get it lined up. Now I think I have snapped a pixel on or something, so I'll use the keys. And uh, there you go. So that is how you build this page full of text. So I think you can tell that once you kind of know what you're doing, this really is pretty easy to do. The trick is learning how to do it, but you'll get there in no time. Okay, so that finishes up this. Please play with those exercise files and uh, I'll see you in the next video.